Hello and welcome back. I am Darcy Bits and this is the shortlist where we round up all the interesting cards from, well, actually all the cards that were saved in the forging process for our Magic AI Showdown. If you haven't seen the Magic AI Showdown, I highly recommend it. It is Whales vs. Goblins. It's a delight. And here today we are going to be seeing the last third, because I broke it down into videos, otherwise it would be super long, last third of these cards that were made. These cards are cards that got made but didn't see play, got made but didn't make it into the deck, or got made and did see play. Yeah, yeah, mm. But not the cards that got made and didn't even get bothered saved, because, well, I can't show the ones I didn't save. But also, they weren't they weren't interesting, that's why we didn't save them. Now, what is reasonable to save? I don't know, basically anything that you think might be playable. Um, so starting off, right here, we have Strong Whale. Strong Whale is a 2-mana, two 2-2, two, two blue whale. It says Flash, you can cast this spell anytime you can cast an instant, and Flying. This is not super interesting. It's not an interesting creature. It's just good, right? And I think that's probably why it didn't make it into the deck, even though maybe it should have. I was desperately hurting for early game creatures. So, it turns out, uh, yeah, you need those things. They might not be that interesting. They might not be that flashy, ironically, um, but they're important. So, Strong Whale, 2 mana 2-2 two, two, that you can cast at instant speed and it has flying. Seems pretty good to me, um, but probably got cut because it's just not, it's not as cool and I wanted to put all the cool cards in the deck. Unfortunate. Perpetual Whale. Now, of course, if you have not seen the AI Magic Showdown, you might be wondering why there's art here. I did draw art for a whole bunch of cards, cards that were on the short, short, short list, and I imported into Tabletop Sim. Not all of them made it into the deck, but most of them did. I didn't want to draw art for all the cards that I forged, because, you know, I wasn't going to use most of them. But I did want to draw art for some of them, because I didn't feel like re-importing them after I decided, and I did want to play around with the cards in the virtual tabletop to figure out what was going in the deck. So, Perpetual Whale is a 4-mana, 2-5 blue whale. All whales have double strike. Now, it's interesting that um, the capitalization here, first of all, this card is just busted and super strong, and holy crap, I love it. This is one of my favorite little, like, pieces. I, I, I got it in one game. I got it on the table, which was exciting. But the capitalization of all whales... I'm pretty sure it shouldn't be capitalized like that. And I think this was capitalized in this way because I had actually put into the deck name all whales in quotation marks capitalized, capital A all, capital W whales. So I got all these like weird like all whales as if that was like a thing um, as opposed to all whales. So I, I, I don't know if that did anything weird with the way the AI works or what, but... All whales have double strike. Oh, I forgot to read the flavor text for the last one. They know they can never be killed. Their huge lungs provide air for the entire world. Tribal myth. Uh, I feel like that's probably why I gave them such large pecs. <laughs> and, of course, this is an example of one of our um, uh, whale folk that uh, appear in some of the art that I drew. Because, uh, you know, I figure we should have a good mix of whale the creature and whale the anthropomorphic animal because it's magic. Overwhelming Stampede is a 3-mana blue instant create... No. Counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Ow! That's really good. Uh, since I ended up not going, like, very wide, I think it makes sense that this card got cut for different counter spells. Um... Cheaper counterspells or counterspells with better effects, that sort of thing, but otherwise, a three mana counterspell that with, with no drawback and upside, pretty good. Pretty, pretty fancy card right there, if I do say so myself. But yeah, plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control is an excellent payoff um, if you have a wide board that is huge, a buff that's going to stick around for the rest of the game. Very, very nice. If a beast isn't a cow, it's not worth having. Marauding Ox, Phyrexian Traveler. So, they're not an ox. Their, their name is Marauding Ox. That's kind of a cool name. 
Slave Octopus is a 4-mana, four 4-3 four, blue octopus. When Slave Octopus enters the battlefield, put target creature on top of its owner's library. A little bounce. Bounce that goes all the way to the top of your deck instead of into your hand. Um, legit. More powerful than usual bounce, and you get a 4-3 body in the end of it, which is, like, fine. Like, if we assume the 4-3 body is worth, like, I don't know. If you assume it's worth 3 mana, then this is a 1 mana bounce. That's very good. 1 mana super bounce, because it's not just going into the hand, it's going onto the deck. But... Maybe, I, I don't know. Like, would you pay 3 mana for a 4-3 vanilla? Probably not. So let's assume it's like a two mana thing. Now it's two mana for the bounce, right? So I don't know. It's um hard to assess, but pretty good. I think at the four mana slot, I'm not upset I didn't run this. This would I had a lot of four mana creatures in the deck, so I think I don't think this was the best one. I don't think this would have broke made or break anything. All creatures fear the sea, especially the sea in a battle. Typhoon Kraken! Ooh, okay, so before we settled on Mono Blue, things like this happened. And uh, according, at a, at a slight glance, I, I feel like this card would have been illegal anyway, but maybe I thought it was interesting enough to, to read. Typhoon Kraken is a 5 mana blue and red 5 for Kraken. It has affinity for artifacts, it costs 1 less to cast for each artifact you control. Pretty good. Could be a 2 mana 5-4, I'm into that. And for something, 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 Typhoon Kraken gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Now, knowing the AI, that something, something, something is probably blue and red Phyrexian, uh, not Phyrexian, hybrid mana. There is a weird visual glitch that if you have multiple hybrid mana in a row, it gets confused and it just shows up as these blank symbols. So that's probably what that is, but it's not necessarily what it is. Uh, if we assume that's what it is, uh, or at least three mana symbols of some variety, um, Plus three, plus three, for three. It's not that great anyway, so it's kind of whatever. It's fine, right? It's just that it's it's one for one buff, one for one pump, but you have to pay it three at a time, which makes it less flexible. Even the Kraken knows how to toss a party. <laughs> toss a party. Woo! Kulfener Feather Beast is a 2 mana 2-2 two, two blue bird. It is flying and when Kulfener Feather Beast enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to each opponent. Okay. It's not horrible. It's fine. But uh yeah, it's just a 2 mana 2-2 two, two flyer. This is just worse than that uh flash flyer we saw earlier, the strong whale. And it's not even a whale. What good is it? The storms that blow over the Kulfener forest are like something out of a nightmare. Storm Whale! Ah, it's Storm Whale! Look at them, they're adorable! Ah, I love it. Storm Whale is a 4-mana 5-5 five, five blue whale. When Storm Whale enters the battlefield, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's it! You just, sometimes you just need enchantment and artifact removal. And attaching it to a 5-5 five, five seems pretty good to me. An above-rate 5-5? Five, 5-5 five, five, five for 4? Excellent. If it's not useful, if you don't need to destroy any artifacts or enchantments, that's fine. You still have a 5-5. Five five. If you do, sweet, you have a 5-5. Five five. Uh, I like this one a lot. Uh, and I also think that the art is adorable. <laughs> this storm coming out of its... Spout? What is that called? Whale hole. Mm, no, okay. Moving on. The Lord of Atlantis... Chose me to deliver the storms of change to this world. The Storm Rider Prophecy. Silverwing Flitter Speaker is a 5 mana 3 4 blue elemental. It sounds like a like a fairy. It has flying, and whenever Silverwing Flitter Speaker or another creature you control dies, create a 1 1 colorless mirror artifact creature token with flying. That's pretty good. Um, it's 5 mana for a 3 4, which is not a very big body. Uh, but it's, um, as long as it, if as long as it doesn't die, other creatures dying create another token, and that goes infinite, right? If I had something that cared about, like, creatures entering the battlefield, and I had a free sack outlet, you could just sack a random thing an infinite number of times, because it's going to make a 1-1, one, one, then make another 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 1-1. One. I didn't have a combo like that, and I wouldn't. Probably wouldn't want to run it anyway if I did. That's, that's whatever. But, uh, yeah. Very strong potential. But it is a 5 mana 4. 5 mana 3 4. 
it might have been too slow even if I had run it. The signal fires. What? The signal fires his wings into a whirlwind that sweeps away those who displease him. Whale Lodestar is a 3-mana 2-2 blue whale. When Whale Lodestar enters the battlefield, return all creatures to their owner's hands. Okay, this is actually really interesting because since it's on ETB, it's on Enter the Battlefield, so it's going to see itself, right? So when it enters the battlefield, return all creatures, not all other creatures. So this is just a 3-mana, 3-mana bounce the entire board effect, which like... Honestly, would have been pretty good. It's sorcery speed, so you can't do any, like, super shenanigans. But, uh, as we mentioned previously in this, uh, little roundup at the end of, uh, the, this, this, this short list, I had a card which says, said, destroy all non-whales, and of course I figured that was way stronger than any other form of removal I could put in the deck. Why would I bother? Uh, and I, I over, I did not notice that, um lands aren't whales and i completely hosed myself and died um this would have been a probably a pretty good one bounce all the creatures i don't have a three a two two at the end it, it, it's fine but i have this back in my hand right it's like sorcery speed bounce everything buy back for zero right like it just always goes back to your hand which is really strong really strong um i could just perpetually play that now, it probably wouldn't have worked in the actual game, if you've seen the game. Um, my partner had haste! So, you know, uh, probably she would repopulate a board and hit me for three every turn anyway, and I'd eventually die. But maybe this would have helped me get there, you know? Throw down three, now I'm at four mana. Throw down three, now I'm at five mana. Now I can just unload with some ridiculous combo. Because uh, I had some, I had some pretty cool stuff. If I could buy the time. This this one probably would have been excellent for me. But as I said. Well I mean even. This one I probably should have considered this one. Because like. Even if it's not as strong as destroying all non-whales. Again. With the assumed reading that your lands would be fine. Because I missed that personally. Uh, this still has the upside of going back to your hand every time. So the fact that you can repeatedly... You can just do this every turn. Honestly, I wonder if I chose not to play this one just because it would be miserable. That, that I would not be surprised if that was my actual intent. Because I've played against, like, infinite recursive bounce before. Like, full board bounce every turn. And it is... It, it sucks. It's not fun to play against. So... I couldn't tell you what I was thinking, but it's either that uh, it's not strong enough versus my destroy all non-whales, or it's miserable and I don't feel like playing this. Uh, one of those two, don't know which. Oh. This would have been a cool card to get during Unplayably Overpowered. This, ah, dang it. That series really fell through, and I, it's very disappointing. As the whales passed by, I saw their fins, which were like distant lights. I could hardly believe my eyes. Oko. Have Hackvort Trader Shark tr Shark Tooth Trilobite is a two mana one one blue bird. Does not have flying. When Shark Tooth Trilobite enters the battlefield, draw a card. Okay. For two mana and tap, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield. On what the heck? Why this not make it into the deck? Are you kidding me? What? I guess. I guess the thing about like. I love Resurrection. Absolutely adore it. But it's not super useful if you don't have anything in the graveyard. Maybe that was my assumption. I was like, yeah, sure. Repeatable for two mana and a tap. You get to put something in, into play from the graveyard. That's amazing. But only if you have something in the graveyard, right? I don't know. Maybe that was the idea. Maybe that's why it wasn't worth it. I don't know. Oh well, it's still ridiculous. Two mana for a 1-1, one, one. It, it, it's, it's definitely susceptible to removal, and it does have to wait a turn before you can spend the extra two mana to cheat something out, but it draws you a card at bare minimum, which is nice, and then if it does survive, which, like, here's the thing, bare minimum, you play this for two, it draws you a card, then your opponent has to remove it, great. 
they're down a card and you're up a card. Well, you're not up a card. You're 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 broken even. Yeah, totally legit. For two mana and tap, you then put a target creature from a graveyard. Any graveyard could even be your opponent's stuff. If you like, don't have any. You know, if you if you if you, don't, if you don't have anything in your own graveyard, you can still pull things from your opponent's graveyard. Ah. Though new, though no two specimens look alike, their undersides do. Okay, sure. Ixy Reaper is a four mana two five blue whale. When Ixy Reaper dies. You may put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. I saved a lot of this effect because I really like this effect whenever I see it. Uh, this is, it's just kind of slow. This one's four mana and it needs to die and you need to have something in the graveyard. I think this one's probably too slow for real magic, honestly. Which is a shame. In the year... 2173, the most common form of punishment, was a little taste of the person you killed. What? How is that the most common form of punishment? Most things you're punishing people for probably don't involve murder. Drown in Sorrow is a 3-mana blue sorcery. Create X-1-1 one, one white fish creature tokens where X is the number of cards in your hand. Ooh! Ooh, three mana, create six one ones. This would have been pretty cool. This would have been cool retrospectively, just because like having a board that could block might have helped me get there. Wouldn't have been amazing because, of course, my opponent's goblins were getting buffed by lords, so they weren't just one ones. They were two twos and three threes and four fours. But uh, having a whole bunch of these. Imagine, turn one, play a land, pass, turn two, play a land, pass, turn three, play a land, class drawn starts. I guess you're going to make five, right? This is expected to make five fish. That's pretty good for three mana, even at sorcery speed. I think that's perfectly legit. Hunt only for them. Their living shrieks echo through the water, shattering any tranquility. I have heard they are the spawn of desolation itself. Hildred, Yorian Whale Hunter. They are, of course, fish. Raphael's Drake. Another Raphael card. If you did not see the last video, you might not know who Raphael is. Uh, or the first video. I guess I mentioned them in both. Raphael was a character in some flavor text that I thought was funny. So I put them in the, in the deck name of Urzai. And it built me a bunch of Raphael themed cards. I want to do a dedicated video like that. If anybody has a cool name that we could maybe try to like spawn a bunch of derivative cards from let me know in the comments love to hear about that Raphael's drake is a four mana two three blue drake it has flying and raid now raid is an actual ability word in magic but ability words don't have inherent rules they simply denote the a sort of formulaic Thing, right landfall does not mean whenever a land enters the battlefield do the following effect landfall just denotes hey then the following effect is going to have something to do with lands entering the battlefield right uh and raid i believe in real magic is it's like if you attacked this turn or something um so you want to like cast the spells in the second main phase that kind of thing but here it doesn't matter that's what it means in magic because it has no inherent rules so this is just says two mana as an activated ability Create a 2-2 two, two blue drake creature token with flying. That's pretty good. That's that's pretty good right there. Again, this is a 4-mana creature for a 2-3 flying body. So it's not, like, it, it's not hitting the field very early. Once it does, right, if you throw this down on turn 4 and it survives the round... The next turn, you can just spit out another two two twos, and then still have mana to spare. Well, if you play a land, uh, which is like when I say that, it doesn't sound amazing, but like believe me, it is. It's very good. What's Raphael have to say? There's something in that storm that will bring me back. Oh, so did they like tame a Drake from a storm? I, I'm so interested in Raphael. Raphael is so cool. Lightning Lure is a five mana red sorcery. Create X-2-2 two, two red elemental creature tokens with haste, where X is the number of lands you control. Holy crap! Was this in B's deck? 
I wonder if this was in B's deck. Uh, B is my partner. I didn't actually mention that. I just said my partner earlier in the video. So if you don't know that, that's who B is. Um, she's great. Did I make it? If I made this card, uh, that's possible. And I could have easily forgotten. Or B made this card and was actually in her deck and we just never saw it. Or B made it and it didn't make it into her deck. But dang. Five mana for, a let's say, a minimum of five tutus with haste. Seems pretty good. Now that I say that, it doesn't sound amazing. Like, it's it's very good for real magic, don't get me wrong. I'm not sure how amazing it is otherwise, but... I don't know, five mana is just a lot. Five mana is just a lot of mana, but... Whew, it does something immediately. Like, they have haste. It's not like you're just making a bunch of blockers. Although... Yeah. I mean, they're not goblins. I didn't read the flavor text. When night began to fade and the orc's cries grew less distinct, he felt her again. As he rose to join her, he sensed a pain, a life torn from the heart of a demon. I have no idea what any of that means. Silverback Leviathan is a 5-mana, 6-6 six, six blue Leviathan. When Silverback Leviathan enters the battlefield, you gain 4 life. When Silverback Leviathan dies, you gain 4 life. 5-mana for a 6-6 six, six is already pretty dang good, but... Well, it's five mana. It, it's you five mana. Just it's so slow, and then it sits there. You're getting some life, so it's gonna hold. But it's gonna like hold things back for a little while. It's gonna maybe help you get there, but by by the time you're doing five mana, you should be doing something more impactful, probably. Pray to Ugin, Lord of the Five, Inquisitor Valus, to Daredi. Mog Flatswater, no. Mog Flats Walkers is a two is a three mana. Wow, what's wrong with me today? Is a three mana one one blue fish. When Mog Flats Walkers enters the battle the battlefield, put a plus one plus encounter on each creature you control. As a cost, remove a one one counter from each creature you control. Regenerate Mog Flats Walkers. From each creature you control, so if you have any creatures that don't have counters on them, you can't activate this ability. Not that you ever would, like who cares, why would you bother regenerating a 1-1? One -one? It's already done its thing. But as an ETB, sorcery speed, 3 mana, pull counter on each creature you control, which includes this thing, so it does sort of enter as a 2-2-ish. I wonder if that's good enough. Seems pretty good. The long throats of the Mog are notorious for inhaling breezes. The breezes come for the fish, of course. But the fish come for the breeze. Sense the nettle! Yeah, it sense the nettle. I think I had this in my hand a few times, but never actually managed to play it. Sense the nettle is a three mana blue instant. Draw two cards. You may play one of those cards from your hand without paying its mana cost. If you don't, draw two cards. Isn't that cool? I love this card. This card's so cool. So it's draw two, play something for free. You can choose not to play and be like, eh, neither of these are really that expensive, or neither of these are that useful right now. It's I'd rather just draw two more cards. And then it becomes three mana draw four, which is great. Like, this card is so good. I love this card. Also, it gets around timing restrictions. It's you may play one of those cards, right? So it's not like until end of turn or whatever. It's just like right now you may play the cards, which gets around sorcery speed and creatures and enchantments and stuff. So just this card, I love this. I love this card. It's so cool. It is a little bit of random. Like you have the contingency factor, but if there's nothing good to play, you get to draw two more cards, which is huge. But if there is something good on the top two cards of your deck, you can just cheat out the hugest, ridiculous whale. Um, I don't know why I never got the chance to play this card. I think maybe I drew it and, like, ended up mulliganing it or something. I don't know. I just, I love it. It's so good. In life, few saw Nettlewood and its vast spires of furs. In death, the last rays of light catch the topmost boughs and spread out like a net of fire illuminating the cavern of Whale's Ribcage. So uh, hopefully that explains the picture that I drew. I tried to draw literally that thing. 
Rain of Rocks is a 2-mana 1-2 blue elemental with flying. Rain of Rocks enters the battlefield tapped. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Rain of Rocks deals 2 damage to target creature. This seems pretty dang good in a spell slinger deck. I was not a spell slinger deck, so, you know. But dang, otherwise. Rain of Rocks could hardly hold back the wind. I don't know how much more it's worth talking about. I do like the design of, like, an elemental, which is just, like, a thing. Like, there's a Rain of Rocks going on, and that's not a sorcery. That is an elemental. That is, like, that is what it is. Like, that's, that's, that's fun. I like that. Whale Prowler is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two blue whale creature. Creature whale? Whatever. For 1 mana, target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end turn. That's it. And, like, that's good. Like, yes, it's a 1 to 2 pump that can target any creature. So you can play, you know, 4 mana and have this enter as a 2-2 two, two and buff something that's already on the field that can attack, right? Uh, which is great. Probably if I had this in my deck, it would have come down as a 3-3 three, three and blocked and died because I was just getting completely overrun, but whatever. Whale, ever vigilant, constantly scan the waters for trouble. Oh, whale, ever vigilant. I guess they're using whale as like a, like, like, like a singular plural, right? Whale, ever vigilant, constantly scan the waters for trouble. That's the true thing about whales. Windcaller Ruse is a 2-mana 1-1 one, one blue bird wizard. It has flying and you may cast spells as though they had flash. Oh, that's fun. Tap, tap target creature. Honestly, this is pretty good. I like this spell. Holy crap. That effect for so cheap is very, very powerful. It's just, like, usually you're paying more for that. It's a very fragile body. It's only a 1-1, one, one, so it can get pinged down easily. But it's a flyer, and it can tap to just tap something down. Which, tap to tap, oftentimes, is very good. You're tapping something that doesn't really care about attacking or blocking anyway, and you're able to tap down the biggest threat of your opponents. Like, that's efficient. The callous ears of the Kestrels heed the call of battle. Wow. Zodiac Whale! Yes! Okay, Zodiac Whale, uh, I believe, did make it into the deck because I thought it was funny, and I really wanted everyone to enjoy my very good joke. Zodiac Whale is a 3-mana blue whale with flying. It's a 2-2. Whenever Zodiac Whale deals combat damage to a player, put a plus 1 plus encounter on it. This thing could actually completely get out of hand, right? 3-mana for a 2-2 two, two with flying is fine, and then it's going to grow every time it connects. If the game goes long enough, that becomes an unbearable threat. But most importantly, its name is Zodiac Whale. If you don't know, there is a series of cards in Magic that are like Zodiac Rabbit, Zodiac Goat, Zodiac the rest of the Zodiac animals that I don't know. I don't think it has all of them. Zodiac Rat is one of them. There's a bunch. Um, and I don't know if they have anything interesting about them. I don't remember what their actual specifics are. Uh, but they're all drawn in this very cool art style of, like, just the creature in profile overlaid over this, like, brown... Almost like it's, like, carved into dirt. Like, like Zodiac Wheel... Uh, and I, I, I wanted to do that. So, so it's Zodiac Whale. That's it. That's the, that's it. I just, I just like this drawing. That's it. It could have fed many for weeks until the arrival of sailors. Sarah's Brawlers is a three mana, two, four, blue and red Leviathan. It has menace. Whenever Sarah's Brawlers enters, no, Brawlers deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. That's kind of just okay. It's a 3-mana 2-4 with Menace, so, like, it might be able to get through. If you play it on turn 3 and your opponent doesn't have a very huge board yet, then it might be able to just get through. Because, uh, you know, it's got Menace. But it's not most likely to, and it's just a single card draw on, on Connect. Which, don't get me wrong, is good, but it's not, like, it's not game-winningly good. Did I not read the flavor? Sorry. Tigers cannot resist the lure of metal. Is it? Word of wisdom. Drown in knowledge is a two mana blue instant. Draw three cards. Then you may pay one. If you do, draw three cards. So I don't know how. Uh, yeah, mm, mm. I 
something I say quite a lot about AI magic is that, yes, it will, in fact, just straight up give you, like, two mana draw six. It's a thing it will do. Don't underestimate Urza's AI. Um, this is three mana draw six. I have no idea why this isn't in the deck. What's wrong with me? Did I think I had better draw spells? Did I actually have better draw spells? Wow. Dang. Knowledge as it festers is unstoppable. Osioc, Envoy. But yeah, it's draw three. Then you may pay one if you do draw an additional three, which is fantastic. Not only is that three mana draw six, which is amazing, but what's kind of cool is that you could actually be like, I'm going to spend two mana and draw three, look at these cards and go, you know what? I don't need to draw another three. I'd rather save that one mana. I don't know if that would ever actually come up, but it's cool that that's an option. The like flexibility of the card. That's, that's fun. Also, just two mana draw three is already amazing, and you don't even need to go three mana draw six for it to be good. Anyway. Absolute ridiculous. Deflect! Okay, this is maybe one of the most... This this might be the most powerful spell in the game. I, in, the, in the deck. I really liked this one. This one felt great to use, and just as super powerful. Deflect is a two mana instant. It's blue, it's a counter spell, it says counter target spell, I don't know why I said it's a counter spell. Counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, put that card onto the battlefield instead of into its owner's graveyard. So, it's a two mana counter spell that hits anything, it's already really good, and then, if you targeted a permanent, you get it, instead of it going into your opponent's graveyard just fantastic just so good it makes me think of like what's that one like mana leak or mana siphon or something where it's like get mana equal to its mana value or whatever of the card you countered it's like that except for you also get the card and you must spend that mana on that card like <laughs> it's just it's so good may the counter spell fail you may your will not match your spells isker druid you wish isker druid Leviathan of Zhukai is a 3-mana 2-3 black Leviathan. It has Vigilance, and as long as it's your turn, Leviathan of Zhukai gets plus 2, plus 2, and has Flying. Okay. Can't block Flyers, but it's a 4-5 Vigilant Flyer for 3-mana. Sign me up! Of course, I ended up not playing black, so I couldn't include it. But if I did, yeah, I probably would run this. This thing's nuts. Zhukai Titans is subsist on the blood of the slain. You can only block as a 2-3, but it's still, for 3 mana, that's perfectly not, that's perfectly reasonable. Persistent Plunder is a 2 mana blue instant. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield if you do draw a card. I think this card's not in the deck because I just had, like, a literal better version of it. Earthen Seashell is, like, put two cards from your hand onto the battlefield for two mana. The draw card on this is nice, though. I like this card a lot. This card's rad. It would be very convenient to possess the gear. It would be very inconvenient to lose it. Nissa Ravain. That makes sense. Uh, but yeah, two mana. Put a creature from your hand onto the battlefield. Just fantastic. Um, I think a lot about cheat spells right you can cheat from the graveyard you can you can cheat from your hand and if you're lucky you can cheat from your deck and each of these zones is like has different pros and cons graveyard is great because it can just get filled with everything all the good stuff you already played and died can come back uh, it, it it just it's it's this like infinitely sized hand potentially if you can get cards into it the hand is great because you know exactly what's available in your hand you're drawing a card into your hand every turn so it's it's always getting filled, but you lose card advantage because, well, well, you don't really, but, like, you're playing a card from your hand, right? What's cool about this one is that you draw a card afterwards, so, like, you can play something from your hand and then replace it, which is excellent. And then, of course, the deck is the most powerful because it is just a massive library of cards. Your library, I should say, not your deck. Uh, massive library of cards. Uh, if you can 
search your library, then that's great. Now, usually it's not your library you're cheating from. It's like the top card of your library, which of course is just pure luck unless you have some way of putting something there, but I'm not sure why I'm going on about this. I just like cheat spells, and as much as I love cheat from the graveyard, oftentimes you don't have the means to put good stuff into your graveyard, making them irrelevant. This, there's always going to be something good in your hand. It you're, 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 You draw a card every turn. So, yeah, that's really, really cool. True Swell is a 3-mana 1-2 blue whale. It has flying and tap, add blue, blue. It's a great mana dork. We love it. I think I end up having, like... A like a like a two mana tap add three colorless or something. So I was like, nah, I don't need this three three mana whale. I probably should have run this. It's a one two flyer, which is fine if I need some kind of flyer. But then also it taps for two blue. It is three mana, which is a little bit of a shame, but that's okay. That's fine. I'd spend three mana for a for for this effect. It's great. What's interesting here is that, um, well, it's a whale, right? The the other sort of mana dork that I ended up putting in the deck is not a whale. It's a spirit, I think it was. So even though it's probably weaker, it's got upside. Its haunting cry rises from the sea like a thousand trumpets. Rakdos Coffer is a three mana, two, three white human pirate. At the beginning of your end step, create X- 1-1 one, one black warrior creature tokens with haste where X is Rakdos Coffer's power. Ooh, I like this card. Wow. Obviously, I didn't end up playing white. I think I made this card because it's a pirate, right? So it's whale-ish. Dang. So it's a 3-mana 2-3. Three three. At bare minimum, at the end of your turn... It's at your end step, they have haste, so it's irrelevant, but that's funny. Um, at, at minimum, this is three mana, create two one ones and a two three for four five worth of power and toughness. And then do it again next turn! Uh, it's the beginning of your end step, not any end step, so it's not super b ridiculous broken. Um, but yeah, and if you can pump this, it gets even better. I I love this, that's excellent. Those who survive in the Voral trade bring with them tales of more than just coin. I really hope you're not getting too much background noise. There are people talking in the rest of the house. I apologize. Onslaught Whale is a 6-mana 7-7 seven, seven blue whale. Whichever player controls the largest whale wins. Yeah! It's Onslaught Whale! <laughs> um, so obviously this card doesn't do anything. Like... This this wording doesn't mean anything, right? If this was a like a like a like an instant or sorcery, right? A spell that you cast, it'd be like, hey, right now, check to see if anyone has a large whale. If somebody does, they win, right? Um, two things. One, this is not an instant or sorcery, so is this just a, like static effect? Like from now on, whenever. Or it just didn't even say whenever, this is whichever. Like, it doesn't make sense on a permanent anyway. But even if it did, what does controlling the largest whale mean? Obviously, I would argue that I have the largest whale. I have a 7-7 seven, seven whale. But largest isn't defined. It's not the whale with the most power, or the whale with the most toughness, or the whale with the most combined power and toughness. Even if it did, honestly, at 6 mana, I might run this because it's funny. And, yeah, that's stupid. The idea of, like, I survived till I had six mana, so I played this spell and won when I should have lost. That's kind of, that's kind of bogus. Don't play cards that do that. But, uh, it'd be funny once. <laughs> it's your funeral, Hive Archon. What a stupid card. It doesn't, like, it just, it just doesn't actually, it's using undefined terms. That's how I usually define, like, a card being broken in Urza's AI, is if it's using terms that are not defined. Largest is not defined. Now, we as players could decide what that means, but it doesn't mean anything inherently to the rules. I would say largest means combined power and toughness. But maybe it means highest mana value. I don't know. 
And also, even if it did, as we mentioned previously, this has no timing window. It just says whichever player controls the largest, which, you know, probably means like, you know, whenever a player controls a whale, whichever player controls the largest whale wins, right? And so it will only check once somebody controls a whale, which will, of course, be immediately because this is a whale, but ignoring that. Um, and then if there is more than one whale under the controls of the different players, then it will check to see which of the largest. And then largest needs to be defined, blah, blah, blah. It's stupid, but it's very funny. I should have made a card called the largest whale. Nah, I'm joking. I didn't actually name any of the cards. I made let or say I do all of that. All I did was the deck name field. I do like the card by card builder. Maybe I should use it more. It's very fun. Um, I just, I've been not doing that because I've been building these bulk cards lately, right? Teferi Time Raveler is a Drake. Nice. Three mana for a blue star four. Creature Drake. Teferi Time Raveler is, uh, has flying, and Teferi Time Raveler's power is equal to the number of lands you control. So it, this is probably like a 3-4 on turn, the turn it comes into play, but then becomes like 4-4 on the next turn, 5-5 five, five on the, 5-4 on the next turn, 6-4 if you keep getting your land drops. That's like a, not a bad lead, like, as far as flyers go, like a 3-mana flyer, that's a pretty good stat line, and it's, has the potential to continue to grow. I quite like this. This seems like a very strong design. The first people to tame time were dangerous enough. Now they think they can stop it. Knickknack, inventor of the Chronoflix Chronofoil. Huh. Surge Orc is, of course, a whale, obviously. Surge Orc is a 3-mana, 2-3 blue whale. It has Surge. Surge means... Whenever this creature attacks, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn. For each creature you control, except it. It also has Surge! Whenever this creature attacks, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn. For each creature you control, except it. I don't know if Surge is a real keyword or not. I have actually no idea. Uh, but I thought this was funny, and so it's in the deck. Is this the best card? I actually don't remember if it made it into the deck or not. I shouldn't say that. It got art. It got under the short short list. But... I don't know if Surge is a real mechanic, I don't know if this was actually that strong of a card, but it's it's a whale with Surge Surge. It's Surge Orc, the whale with Surge Surge, which is great. I love that. That's excellent. So, that's good enough for me. I definitely prioritize cards that I thought were funny and cute. The, yep, yeah, mm-hmm. Don't call us gill men. We're far too friendly. Gerd, Tarkir Explorer. But yeah, look at this thing. I mean, what is that? If you have two creatures, including this, then when you if you attack with both of them... Oh, you don't even attack with both of them. The other ones can just hang out on the sidelines for each creature you control. Yeah, so if you have two creatures, including the Surge Orc, when it attacks, it's going to become a 4-5. Three mana 4 fives, not bad. Ornithopter is a 2-mana 1-3 blue whale. It is flying and tap, draw a card. Excellent. Perfectly excellent card. I, I had so many card draw effects. I'm not. I'm no longer surprised that something this strong didn't make it into the deck. That is fantastic. And you know what? I just had a lot of card draw. Yeah. The only thing it lacks is an engine. Ha, <laughs> cool. But yeah. Two mana for a 1-3 flyer is already kind of okay, and then you can tap it to draw a card. You can even do it, like, on your opponent's end step, so you can use this as, like, a really reliable, like, asymmetric blocker. Uh, by asymmetric, I just mean, like, low power, high toughness. Um, so a very, a very solid wall, a flying wall, uh, that you can then uh, tap to draw a card uh, at the end of your opponent's turn. Like, super, super solid design. Defensive Measures is a 1-mana red instant. Target creature you control, fight the target creature you don't control. That's a really solid little kill. I like that. Might is not strength. Melee is not battle. Brudevazine. I believe B did run this in her deck. I remember playing against it. It killed one of my guys. I remember, I remember this doing work. This was a great little cheap kill spell. Sky Whale is a 3-mana 2-2 blue whale. 
it has flying, and when Sky Whale enters the battlefield, draw a card. Great. Simple. Great. Probably good enough in most decks. Uh, maybe even should have been in mine, because I didn't have enough low power, low cost cards. But, uh, there's just so many cooler cards. Like Sky, but bigger. <laughs> the Sky Whale. It's a whale-sized Sky. <laughs> Sky Whale again. What? Oh, it's also called Sky Whale, but it's a different whale. Sky Whale is a 2-mana two 2-1 two blue whale with flying, and blue regenerates Sky Whale. Cool. It thunders in with the voice of thousands of humpback whales. Great. I like regenerate. On a 2-1 body, regenerate's not super enticing, but honestly, a 2-mana two 2-1 two flyer is good. And being able to protect it so that it can continue to chip the entire game yeah i'll take it goblin famine oh i remember this one goblin famine is a four mana two two red snow creature goblin when goblin famine enters the battlefield you lose two life at the beginning of your upkeep if goblin famine is in your graveyard you may put a card that shares a card type with it from your graveyard onto the battlefield that's right Every, if you can get this into your graveyard, it's, it's a bad card to play. It's four mana, it hurts you, it's a 2-2, two -two, it's not good. But if it goes into your graveyard, every upkeep, you can return a creature from your graveyard to play. And it's a, you may put a card that shares a card type, which is important, because if it didn't say you may, it would cheat itself out and ping you again. If you had no other creatures which actually now that i'm thinking about this from a design standpoint that would be a cool design bad creature has a negative effect when it etbs and it cheats things out from your graveyard every turn but it's kind of like an upkeep cost you ever see those like really weird upkeep costs so um there's a card in well actually probably a good example is like braid of fire braid of fire if i recall correctly is an old card that had upkeep that was like um keyword of upkeep gain a red mana that's not a bad thing why would i not want to do that that's great um but in the original game right um mana burn existed so upkeep if you don't know at the beginning of your upkeep pay the upkeep cost and the payment can be anything it can be gaining mana as as this case would be i'm sorry about the noise really apologize um now, cumulative of upkeep is you put an age counter on it, and then you pay the upkeep for each age counter. So, every turn it sticks around, the upkeep increases, right? And Rate of Fire, at the time, the point of it was that you could use that mana to pay for other upkeep costs. Because mana goes away when a phase ends, right? Um, so, you can only spend that mana during your upkeep, not that useful. Uh, unless you have instant speed effects that you can do, like uh, abilities that you want to pay for, or upkeep costs. But, since at the time in that game, Mana Burn existed, Braid of Fire would kill you if you didn't have an upkeep cost that you could pay. The mana would disappear, and you would take Mana Burn. You would lose life equal to the amount of mana lost, right? So... It was a card which was like, you gotta walk this balance. It's very powerful effect. You're, you're just getting free mana. But if you can't use it, you're gonna get punched. And so the idea of, like, Goblin Famine being this, like, upkeep, put a creature from your graveyard into, ba into, the, into the battlefield, but, oh, you can't, you sacrifice the creature, right? That's the kind of thing that you, I think, you actually you do see in black sometimes. Like, a creature that's like, upkeep, return a creature from the battlefield and so like that seems really good because you're cheating something out of your in your graveyard every turn i said you know what i mean um but then if you don't have anything in your graveyard it dies because you can't pay the upkeep right um and then you just give us like some like when this dies like burn your whole board or something horrible right like that's the kind of like loop that we're talking about this on the other hand would be in your graveyard and then if there's nothing else in the graveyard it must target itself i guess it actually kind of reminds me of like um Cards that are, like, every turn sacrifice a permanent, right? And so you can eventually sacrifice itself uh, if you have nothing else to sacrifice, and then it dies and goes away. Um, 
This is all just like theoretical. Just to, to, to reiterate, this card is a May ability. This will never force you to cheat itself onto the battlefield. But I like the idea of a card that cheats out something from the graveyard every turn. But if there's nothing other than it in the graveyard, it cheats itself out and it has like a really bad ETB. That sounds really fun to me. I like the idea of that card. That's all I was saying. This was way too long of a tangent. It's not easy surviving in the Badlands. You'll need every bit of energy to hold off the marauding horde. Hordes? Hordes? Hordes. Leviathan is a 4 mana, 4, 3 blue. Leviathan! We love Leviathan. Leviathan is the best Leviathan, obviously. When Leviathan enters the battlefield, you gain 4 life. For blue, Leviathan gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is its power. So... Ah... Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yep. It's a 4-mana four 4-3 four, that, if it sticks on the board, just wins the game? You attack, if it can get through, if it can connect a face, right? It doesn't have any evasion, so it can it dies to chump blockers, right? If you could give this trample, or flying, or, or menace, or something, and, and allow it to get through, or just any form of unblockable. This is what? You got 4 power, you pay 1, you have 8 power, you pay 1, you have 16 power, you pay 1, you have 32 power, you pay 1. <laughs> you have 64 power it's it's brutal i don't know if i didn't play it because it was too powerful i don't know if i didn't play it because it was too slow i have no clue this card looks great actually the health would have been relevant against uh b's aggro plan it, it it probably wouldn't have worked is the funny thing because b had so many chump blockers right like she had a wide board so she's gonna be able to block this thing for days and i wouldn't be able to get through like it probably wouldn't have even mattered is the funny part but dang is it not cool it even is a plus x plus x it's not like plus x plus o right it's not only increasing your power it's just absolutely nuts it carries a massive load but has little interest in doing the same for others. Contagion. Contagion is another one of my counter spells. It is two mana, counter target spell, draw a card. That's it. Actually, didn't we earlier see a card that was like counter a spell, draw a card? I guess this is why that spell didn't make it into the deck. Because uh, either that spell was worse than this one, or they were the same and eh, I don't need two of them. Yeah, that's probably it. I see I left something important in my laboratory. Perhaps you know where it is. Raphael Flummis. Is that what Raphael's last name is? Is their name Raphael Flummis? Oh, that's great. I love that. That's so good. Wow. That's... That's funny. I didn't know that. But yeah, uh, Contagion, I like this idea of... A counter spell, which is a plague. Like, I feel like that would make more sense if it's counted like a creature. Like, I tried to cast this creature spell, and it's like it dies immediately before it hits the battlefield because it's sick. I, 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 I diseased it while it was summoning in, or something stupid like that. Like that, that, or like some sort of magical contagion that interferes with magic. I don't know. I like it. I think it works pretty well as a counter spell. And then you can draw a card. It's great. Sea Typhoon is a two mana, two one blue fish. As an additional cost to cast the spell, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. Okay, so you might not have anything in the battlefield yet on turn two, so you might have to wait till later tank in the game to play it. When Sea Typhoon enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with mana value three or less, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Cool! A situational, like, cheat. It is a full-on tutor and cheat directly into the battlefield. Very powerful effect. But it costs you one of the creatures you're already on the field which is fun it's like the the creature goes away and then a new creature replaces it i love effects like that ones that aren't explicitly saying like this frog no this person turned into a frog but it is like destroy person create frog and you know what that means right uh, i i think those effects are really fun in magic um i don't know i probably didn't have a lot of mana value three or less creatures that were worth doing this for so you know I can see why this didn't make it in. Very cool spell, though. 
At the beginning of your end step, if you control no creatures, each opponent loses one life. That's flavor text. That's not, that doesn't actually, that's not true. Also, you can't control no creatures and have this effect in play because it is a creature. Unless it, like, I guess if you turned it into, like, an artifact, but it kept all its abilities or something, that would work. But it's flavor text. It doesn't count. Finclad Whale. Finclade? Finclade Whale is a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four blue whale. Like I said, I have a lot of 4-4s, four or a lot of 4-mana cards. When Finclade Whale enters the battlefield, return up to one target creature to its owner's hand. Whenever a whale you control dies, you gain two life. Pretty cool. I like that. That's pretty good. Bounce is a thing. ETB bounce something. Then whales dying gives you life, including this. If Yeah, sweet. Love it. Every species is a separate entity with its own psychology and social structures. Whales do not have the need to hide in packs like dolphins. Malochio manticore artificer sky shrouds gambit is a four mana blue instant target player loses two life you draw two cards and you gain two life i think that's too expensive i think that's too expensive i wouldn't i wouldn't play this in real magic probably uh i welcome you to this experiment kiriel Nissa Ravane. Nissa's doing lots of work over here. I don't know what she's up to. Eon Swift is a 4-mana 3-3 three, three blue whale. Whenever Eon Swift or another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses 2 life and you gain 2 life. Ah, that would have been pretty good. But I wasn't going wide. It's not coming down to till 4. You've heard it all before. When we first beheld it, we thought it nothing but a dream. Now it is ours, and we will not rest until it is ours again. Riptide Relic! Riptide Relic is a 3-mana 2-3 blue whale with blue. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. So remember before when we saw a card with almost this exact same text? Turns out this is why that card didn't make it into the deck. Because this card exists instead. Uh, it's a 3-mana 2-3 whale that can buff something two for the price of one it's great it's super good that's that that is that is actually incredibly strong riptide relics small relics taken from great whales carrying carry a tide of righteousness nice so this whale is a creature named riptide relic but it refers to the relic that they have i don't Moving on! Wind Raven is a 3 mana 1 2 blue bird. It has flying, and whenever Wind Raven deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Simple, clean, maybe a bit too slow at 3 mana. The Keldin lost their wailing grounds to a stronger predator, and the savages who live near the ma mountainside go elsewhere to hunt. Are you referring to the Keldin as the savage? I'm confused. Feast or Famine. Turns out it was Goblin Famine. We didn't know it at the time, but yeah. Feast or Famine is a 3-mana blue instant. Counter target spell, create a 5-5 five, five white and black spirit creature token with flying. So, in other words, here's the funny thing about this. If I look at this and go, ah, eh, that's a 3-mana counter spell. Like, I have cheaper counter spells than that. Yeah, I get a 5-5, five, five, but it's a 3-mana counter spell. I have cheaper counter spells. If that was my thought process, flip it. This is a 5... This is a 3-mana 5-5 five, five with flying and flash, which on entering the battlefield counters target spell. Holy crap, that sounds amazing now! What the heck? The funny thing is... It's actually not as strong as that, weirdly, because you do need to have a spell you're countering. But, I mean, your opponent's gonna count spells. Like, this this card is just absolutely nuts, and I definitely should have played it. Holy crap. But hey, it's not a whale. It's not in theme. Many have been denied a feast. In their honor, you may hold an empty vessel. Anathem. Surfing Luck is a two-mana blue instant. Draw two cards. Ha! Two mana draw two? Absolutely unplayable. <laughs> when drawn, call all sand wings and cephalopods. 
Whale Custody is a two-mana blue enchantment aura. Enchant creature. You control enchanted creature. Blue, sacrifice whale custody, draw two cards, then discard two cards. I like this. I think this is fun. Um, this was one of the only other forms of removal I had in the deck other than that, the, the, the board wipe we've talked about before. Um, because I think that two mana steal something is kind of like, like that's just the most interesting form of removal because it's not just you losing something, I'm gaining something. Um, which is just excellent. It's a, it's sorcery speed because it's an enchantment, but it is just straight up, straight up killing. Unless you can remove the enchantment, in which case you get it back, which, eh, it's risky. Um, but what's cool about it, right, is that if I want to, I can give you back the creature by spending a blue and sacrificing whale custody. It's not great, it's only draw two, loot, discard two, but it's not terrible. It's cool to have as an option if you need it. Uh, I don't think that would ever come up, though. If I want your kid, I'll ask nicely. Lon, a siren of Chult. So, uh, yeah, this is, um, that, that, that's, that's the creature that's talking to that child, uh, in the picture. Um, let's not think about it too much. Guilt Leaf Prowler is a 3-mana, three 3-2 three Black Whale. When Guilt Leaf Prowler deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. We saw a lot of this effect. This one doesn't even have flying. Also, of course, it's black, so it wouldn't make it into the deck regardless. With sail or without, the Orca remains a fixture in any large-scale pirate party. Aw, yeah. Neonate Whale is a 4-mana 2-3 enchantment creature whale. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one for blue, blue, draw a card. This is fantastic, but it does come down pretty late at four mana. Universal Lords are just excellent, though. You know, just straight up. We talked about this in the actual, like, Magic AI showdown, where it was just like, hey, a creature that gives all my goblins plus one, plus one is pretty cool, but a creature that gives all my creatures plus one, plus one is just better. Like... The Goblins one is more interesting, but the other one is just better, so I, I guess I'll run that one. Yeah. Its skin has a luster, more like an oil slick than water. Ooh, that's cool. Right, because it's an enchantment. Thirst for Battle is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two green goblin. When Thirst for Battle enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one green goblin creature tokens. Just excellent. Uh, we saw this before with um that... that um, that whale I had, that was like, I didn't run it, right? But we saw it earlier in the video. Uh, three mana, it was a 2-3 that it, on end step creates 1-1s one equal to its power. So it effectively becomes the same sort of idea. Um, in this case, though, uh, B, of course, oftentimes is able to give her entire board haste. So this is even stronger, but, you know. Yeah, no, whatever, whatever. A bit of water will make him stronger. He'll never be thirsty again. Ruta, Wasteland Wanderer. Uh, but yeah, three mana for 2-2, two, two, and then an additional two more 1-1s. One, it's pretty good. Three mana for 4-4 four, four worth of stats. And it's across three bodies, which is sometimes an upside. It's definitely an upside if you're going wide and having, like, all your creatures have plus one, plus one. Because that's, that's plus three, plus three across the three bodies instead of having one creature that gets plus one, plus one, right? Dawn Patrol Falcon. Oh, one of the few non-whales that got art because I thought they were just interesting enough. Dawn Patrol Falcon is a 2-mana, two 2-2 two, two blue bird. It has flying and 2-mana. Creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Repeatable pump for the whole board is potentially so powerful. Again, I didn't really have a go-wide deck, so it's not as strong as it could be, but you can imagine how ridiculous that could be, right? You're spending two for one, but it's one on all your creatures. So that's like two for three, or two for four, or two for five, or two for six, right? Very, very strong. And it's got flying. It's a 2-2. Two -two. It's a 2-2 two -two flying with two. I was like, that's already, that's already great. I'm sure I don't have to explain to the Phyrexians how the almighty and all-seeing eye of Saul works. But now it's Diplomat. Ink Fathom Mystic is a 2-mana, 1-3 blue whale. For blue and tap, tap target permanent. Great! A siren has but one thought, the beauty of the Lost Sea. Plunderer's Band is a 3-mana, three 3-2 three, black creature human pirate. At the beginning of your end step, 
If you have more cards in hand than each opponent, put a plus one plus one counter on Plunderer's Band. Okay, so it's a three mana, three, two that grows, potentially. Cool. For two mana, create a one, one black dread pirate creature token with menace. I like the implication that dread is a creature type. That's fun. Um, cool. That's legit, right? That's that's pretty cool right there. Two mana. To make a one one. You can do that as many times as you want every turn. It's great. Um we saw earlier that like uh two mana to make a two two, which is better, but um I think that thing had more overhead. I think it was like a four or five mana card. I think it was a I think it was a four mana card. So not actually that much lower, but pretty cool. I also what's like what I like about this as well is that it wants you to be holding your cards in your hand. So the fact that you're being able to make material on the board without spending a card in hand is actually super relevant to allowing this creature to continue to grow. It's really cool. Very cool design. The ship rose to meet him. Not even a prayer could stop it. Spawning Pool is a 2-mana, 1-1 one, one blue whale. Spawning Pool can't be blocked. Cool. Figured it was good to have some some can't be blocks in the, in the pool of cards. I didn't end up running it, but, you know, worth saving in the process of forging the cards that go into my deck building pool. I probably should have read the card. I keep forgetting to do that on cards that I don't have a lot to say about. Only when it is thirsty is the sea fit for fish. But it is never empty. Corsair's hymn. Oh, I probably should have tried to sing it. Bone Collector is a 3-mana, 2-2 two, two black shark. It has Swamp Walk, and for black, Bone Collector gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Simple, clean, very strong. We have this effect that could target other creatures. Um, and of course, we weren't playing black. A formidable defender of the swamps, it att its attack patterns more closely resemble a slinking cat than a shark. Ooh, that's cool. Ferocious Ferocity is a 3-mana blue instant. Destroy all non-whales. They can't be regenerated. I made this effect twice? What the heck? I don't remember this. Was was Meteor Swarm, Meteor, whatever, Meteor Storm, Meteor, whatever that one. Was that one more expensive than three mana? Like, was that cheaper than three mana? Was that two? There's no way that was two mana, was it? I just made this effect twice. And both times... It would blow up your lands. If if this card said, like, non-whale creatures, and this entire time I could have run this card instead of Meteor Storm, that would have been such a blow. That, that would have shaken me to my core. <laughs> That's not the case, though. I'm still baffled that I made this same card twice in the Forging video. And both times... Both times... It blows up lands. That's wild. This card's pro- Unless the other one was two mana, which I don't remember. This card was probably better, because I don't know, B could have had regenerate. The AI makes regenerate. Even though we don't see it anymore in, in modern magic, like, the AI makes regenerate cards. This- The, the they can't be regenerate could have been relevant. I've killed whales aplenty, but I haven't seen a killer whale yet. Bonehead, there's a familiar below. Huh. Okay. Gentle Waters is a 4-mana, 2-3 blue whale. Whale spells you cast, cost 1 less to cast. I love these effects. They're so cool. Um, for 4-mana, it's kind of expensive. You want to be getting those down early so you can discount your 4-mana spells, right? Um, also, we just got a better version of this card came up in the previous video, so go back if you have if you missed that one, but it was I think it was like 3 or 2 mana and it discounted spells by like 2. It was ridiculous. It was 100% in the deck and just I didn't draw it. So we never got to see it in the showdown. It's very disappointing to me. Those who wait for gentle waters know the dangers of disappointment. <laughs> Maelstrom Monstrosity. This is another one of the non-whales that got art. Uh, I just want to point this out immediately. I really like 
this drawing for drawing a leviathan that's clearly not a whale, right? Because that's the hard thing, is that whales whales are leviathans. They're huge creatures in the sea. Like, there's, they're huge. Um, so being able to draw something that very clearly isn't a whale was, was very fun for me as a, as a little art challenge. Anyway, Maelstrom Monstrosity is a five mana blue seven six leviathan with flying. That's already great. But also, for 2 mana, you can tap target creature. Or for 3 mana, you can return Maelstrom Monstrosity to its owner's hand. Really, this is just a huge pile of stats with flying, and I love that. I'm a Timmy at heart. Absolutely adore it. But also... 2 mana, tap a creature. That's good. Just being able to spend mana to tap down your opponent's board... Super useful. Maybe I just need to get in past the only flyer that my opponent has. So I tap down their only flyer, and then I slap them in the face with this massive fish. Love it. Even the ocean's monstrous creations can be dangerous to behold. You know, e even the monstrous ones can be dangerous. Eider Whale. That is an I, not an L. Yeah, Eider Whale is a 6-mana, 3-4 blue whale with flying. For blue... Target blue creature gets plus two plus two until it turn. Cool. It's that same effect again. We've seen it a bunch of times already so far. Uh, but this one is a six mana creature before you can even start paying that mana. So kind of a hard sell uh, in comparative. As fierce and predatory as a rogue can be. This is not a rogue. Perilous Find is a two mana blue instant. Draw two cards, you gain two life. We've been over this. There are better draw spells in AI magic. We can't just say, this person's dead. There are laws against that. Vantress, Red Mage of Veristeel. We can't declare people dead? Yeah, I guess that's true. Sail to the Wind is a three mana blue instant. You gain one life for each whale you control. Uh, it's fun to have whale synergy, but it's not really a very good payoff, is it? All eyes on the waters of Krook Clan Stronghold. Come, Krog. We've no time for dilly-dallying. Gold Ghost, Jiroga, Clay Clan. Helium Vapor is a 2 mana, 1 4 blue elemental. At the beginning of your upkeep, return Helium Vapor to its owner's hand. It seems. So it's like a blocker? Like you pay 2. It's like a. It's like a blocker only. It's like a blocker only. Eh, they have to pay again every turn. It's like a defender, but you, it's like a defender with upkeep. Huh. Escape for two. Exile, Helium, Vapor, return all other creatures to their owner's hand. Ah, I see. This is a four mana sorcery speed spell that says return all other creatures to their owner's hand. Then at the beginning of your upkeep, return this as well. So... Right, like we saw earlier with that repeatable spell that bounced all creatures, this would do the same thing, right? You throw it down, you immediately pay the escape, which, once again, escape is an ability word, it means a thing. Or actually, escape might not be. Escape might actually be a keyword. I'm not 100% sure. In this context, it's an ability word. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, you immediately pay the, the, the two. What's interesting about this to me is that it is... At the beginning of your upkeep, return it. So you could very well play this for two. Then, in your next turn, untap, move to upkeep. Be while this is on the stack, activate its escape to exile it. Oh, it exiles helium vapor. So this is only a one use. This doesn't bounce to your hand like that other card. Sorry, I misunderstood. Right, it exiles itself. Huh. Either way, um, potentially pretty strong... But yeah, it's like a sorcery speed. You throw it down for two mana. Maybe it even blocks for a turn. And then at the beginning of your next turn, you can spend two mana to bounce everything. Hmm, could be worth it. When will I learn that fear is useless? Charparal, farmer. Delirium, in quotation marks, is a two mana blue instant. Counter target spell, you gain four life. Pretty legit. I mentioned before how there was a small life gain package uh, in the forging, I thought I might go into life gain, I didn't. So a lot of cards that probably were pretty good, 
I assume have a, th- th- it's possible they got cut just because they had life gain on them and I wasn't like, there's a lot of cards to get through. I could have very easily missed a very good card uh, just because it ended up in a like, I don't need this pile of cards pile, right? Uh, but this is excellent, right? Two mana counter spell, and then you gain some life. Life, I, I very much undervalue life gain. Life gain, pretty good it turns out. Corrosive Digestion is a 3 mana black instant. Destroy target creature, you gain 3 life. Sweet! 3 mana destroy spell. Love it. A Feral Burrowing Gorgon tears apart and devours whatever lives, whatever lives beneath the surface. That makes more sense. Islanding Frigate is a 5 mana 3 4 blue elemental. Islanding Frigate can't attack unless defending player controls an island. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one. I mean, yeah. Oh no, I can't attack. That's okay. I'm just going to buff every creature, plus two, plus one. Again, though, for five mana, whew, I don't know. It's hard to say what the arithmetic on that is. Five mana is a lot. This world will only be saved when we turn our enemies into passengers. Drigo, Stone Prophet. I don't know what that means. Enormous Whale! Yes! I love Enormous Whale! Enormous Whale is a 4 mana, 6-6, six, six, blue whale. Enormous Whale can't be blocked. It's enormous! You can't block it. It's just gonna keep going. What are you trying to do? Get out of the way of the Enormous Whale! <laughs> I love this. It's just a 4 mana, 6-6 six, six, that can't be blocked! Like, it's so good! I love it. It's so funny to me. Rivers of Oil? Forget it. This one runs on pure briny fat. Joira, Wild Mage. Change of Heart is a 2 mana blue instant. Destroy target creature or land. 2 mana kill spell. Can even blow up lands. Actually, probably would have been pretty dang good. It was a whale. Now it is nothing. Razot, Half Elf Scholar. Shriek Ma is a 4 mana, 4-4 four, four blue Leviathan. Whenever Shriek Ma attacks, other attacking creatures get plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. Pretty okay. A rumble in the depths can mean only one thing. Whale Boon Whale is a 6 mana. Who? 6 mana, 4-4 four, four blue whale. As long as you control a whale, you control all lands. <laughs> This very easily could have been in the unplayably overpowered pile. I had a lot. I had a lot of unplayably overpowered cards. I'm just like, no. No, I can't do that. Just one-sided mass land destruction plus you get. That's so funny. Oh, that's so funny. I forgot about this one. It's six mana. Like... I could have been dead before I had 6 mana very easily, but oh, that's funny. This is the kind of thing that I would have, like, included in the deck, I would have played on turn 6, stolen all of B's land, and then she would have just killed me anyway because, like, she had an aggro deck and, like, had enough creatures on the board that she didn't care and didn't need to cast any more spells. Like, oh, that's so funny, though. It has been too long since I've tasted a keener fin than the one in the bows of Kessig. Malork Ravi. Uh, I should say, I think this works, right? Like, it's just a 6 mana 4 4, and it has a static effect of if you control a whale, you control all lands. It's a whale, so you'll always control the whale, and then you control. All lands, so you gain control of your opponent's lands. I think that's accurate to the wording of, of how magic functions, right? It's not like gain control, it's just like a static effect while you're controlling a whale, you control a lands. I do believe that if you stopped controlling a whale or stopped controlling this effect, um, those lands would go back, right? It's not gain control of all lands, period. It's not ETB, gain control of all lands until you lose control of a whale or something. Um, which, even in that case, I don't know if it would work. Because if it died, it wouldn't see that you have no whales and give them back. Yeah. In this case, it would give them back, though. Still, soup. that's so funny. It's, it's just, that's so funny. 
Uh, I keep thinking I should, like, take the most broken cards from this pool of cards and put them in my unplayably overpowered tier list because there's nothing as stupid as this. I didn't make anything as ridiculous as this in Unplayably Overpowered. It's so disappointing. Wall of Green is a 2-mana blue instant. Creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 until 1 a turn. Sometimes you just need a board-wide pump to close out the game. There's no chance of winning this battle. You will not survive. Sukata Sea Chieftain. Rain Thrasher is a 6-mana, six 6-5 six blue whale. Whenever Rain Thrasher attacks, tap all creatures defending player controls. Hey, that's as good as unblockable. <laughs> that's pretty dang good right there. I mean, there's you could flash in something to block, but still, dang. Whale Call can rouse the seas from sleep. When whales hear the sound of ships in the distance, the seas take notice and rise in protest. Kessig Prison Whale is a 3-mana, three 3-3 three, three blue whale. It has flash and tap add colorless colorless. I kind of like this one. Um, we saw a decent number of mana dorks that didn't see play. This having flash is kind of cool. Like, it's not 3-mana if it survives the round. It, you can now tap it for 2-mana. You can play this on your opponent's end step and then give them kind of no time to deal with it before you can already start generating mana which is pretty good three mana yeah well i like it a lot actually when things get desperate sometimes they start attacking the boats <laughs> those things those desperate things are attacking the boat <laughs> abundant slash humble is a two mana blue instant um as we've mentioned before um it's a split card the game, the Urza AI can't actually generate split cards, so think of this as abundant. Although, maybe don't, reading on. Counter target instant or sorcery spell, unless its controller pays one. If you control a whale, create a 1 1 blue humble whale creature token. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is. Maybe this is humble. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> it's a humble whale. It's like that dread whale we saw earlier. Was it a dread whale? It was a dread pirate. It was a dread pirate we saw earlier. The creature type, dread. The creature type, humble. Uh, this is not that great. It's two mana, can only hit turn instants and sorceries, and your opponent can simply pay. That said, you can always create that 1-1 one, one humble whale. It doesn't matter if they pay or not. It's not that great, though. Did they have flavor text? It didn't. Huh, weird. Whale Cunning is a 3-mana enchantment, or enchant creature, you control enchanted creature. Whenever enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. So this card is the other enchant creature to mind control effect that was in the deck. Uh, this one costs one more mana than Whale Custody, but has a cooler ongoing effect, right? Whenever enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. That's cool, it's way more interesting than sacrifice this to, to loot 2, to draw 2, discard 2. Um, so I, actually, I really like this effect. Three mana is expensive, especially at sorcery speed, but you're getting a creature. I mean, it's not expensive for real magic. For real magic, this would cost way more, but I'm ignoring that. That's not relevant to our arithmetic. I do want to talk about the art for a little bit. This is supposed to be somebody who's got, like, whales going around their head, like they got hit really hard in their cartoon, and there's, like, birds flying around their head. You know what I'm talking about? They're seeing stars. Um, but they're whales. It looks like... The whales are their eyes, and they're, like, zoning out really hard, which is not what they're supposed to look like. Those are just whales flying around their head. Uh, they do have their eyes all zoned out, though. That's a little spiral eye, uh, which is adding to the confusion. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's cool. What else would you expect from an AI? Sulak Dazan, Master at Arms. Classic. What else would you expect from an AI? Secret of the Deep is a 2-mana blue instant. Search your library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Honestly, I could have used this. 2-mana ramp spell, pretty dang good. Super legit, instant speed. This would have been great. This would have been great in the deck. Deepness begets power. Ensnare is a 2-mana X spell. It is red, it is instant, and it says you gain X life and draw X cards. Huh! 
I assume this is a card that, that B was running in her deck. I don't know for sure. Uh, kind of expensive. Like, at four mana, this draws you two. At five mana, it draws you three. Eh. When a mortal victim stops running, the tendrils tighten, anchoring their prey to the spot. It does gain you some life, though. That might be relevant. As I said before, I always underestimate life gain. Scion of Urza is a four mana green sorcery. Ooh. Reveal any number of creature cards in your hand. Creatures you revealed this way can't be blocked this turn. Put all creature cards revealed this way onto the battlefield. Oh, okay. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. They're in your hand. So, actually, let's talk about this card. I don't remember if I made this one or not. I B might have, I made of. This, this looks like the kind of card that I might have saved just because I wanted to discuss it. Because, what do you think happens, right? When we add an effect to a game object... If that object, like, changes zones, doesn't the effect go away? Like, it becomes a different object, right? Is that how that works? So, revealing cards from your hand, then put those cards onto the battlefield, and then those creatures can't be blocked. I think that would work, but the fact that it's saying the creatures revealed can't be blocked, and then you put the creatures onto the battlefield, don't they, like, become a different game object once they hit the battlefield? I'm super unsure. This is one of those cards that if we just want to treat it as let's pretend that the intent of the card is real, this is a perfectly legible card. You know how this card works. Reveal any number, put them directly onto the battlefield. They can't be blocked this turn. If they add haste, cool. If they don't, it's irrelevant. Still super busted. Holy crap, four mana just put every creature from your hand on the battlefield. It doesn't even matter if the other half of the card makes sense. Surrender, me fools. I can offer you all the pleasure you can desire. Urza. Urza the pirate. Ancient Bato. We love Ancient Bato. Ancient Bato is a 6 mana 4-4 four, four blue whale. It has flying. And when Ancient Bato enters the battlefield, create a token. That's a copy of target creature. This card goes infinite. In the Magic AI video, I acknowledge it goes infinite. I did not go infinite with it. I think when I first, like, put this card in the deck, I didn't realize it went infinite. I was like, yeah, sure, I make I make a token copy of something. Cool. But it doesn't say another creature. It just says of target creature. So Ancient Bado can enter the battlefield. It's on the battlefield. Target itself with its own ability. Make a 4-4 four, four flyer, which has that ability, which targets itself. Which makes a 4-4 four, four flyer with that same enter the battlefield ability, which targets itself, which makes another 4-4 four, four flyer. So you can just straight up go infinite with this to make an entire board of 4-4 four, four flyers. And honestly, that's pretty good. I like that. That's pretty strong. I didn't do that. Uh, what's especially good about this is that it doesn't go infinite to the point that the game breaks. And by the game, I mean, like, if you think about, like, this card game as a computer, if it is right? Each card forces another effect to happen, right? That's how that works. That's the computing aspect. Um, this is a ETB, create a token that's a copy of target creature. It is a forced effect. It's not a may, but if you have another creature other than itself, you can always just target that creature and break the chain. So actually, now that I think about it, if you had no creatures on the battlefield except for Ancient Bado, the game would just freeze and end in a stalemate right you 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 go infinite with no way of breaking the chain unless you have like a a way of killing an ancient bottom or something actually would that even work if it enters the battlefield and it adds this trigger on the stack if you then kill the creature with the target on the stack yeah, because the creature goes away, so the target fizzles. Even though we don't actually care about the target creature, I believe that's the case. Which is kind of silly when you think about it. It's more like, you know, yeah, create, a, create a, a copy of a target creature. We don't care about the creature anymore. The creature's irrelevant. Who cares that the creature's dead? We've already gathered its DNA and can make a new copy. But I, I believe that is correct about how the game would function. Anyway, it's a six mana spell. It's so exp It's so slow. Every adventure leaves more to explore i do like this like very wise whale with a beard though it's very funny to me copy this is my copy token that's it i made this this one's me i just i, I needed a copy token 
Hagra Geyer Colossus! Yes! I love Hagra Geyer Colossus. They're a 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven vanilla. That's it. I just think that's funny. I just think that's fun. With his mind half underwater and half in the air, it's impossible to tell where he ends and the water begins. Uh, so I drew them where you can see the line of the water. Uh, and also... For some reason, the Hagrid guy... Oh, right, that's why. Because they're a whale horror. So I had to include that horror somewhere in the art. Um, have fun! <laughs> Huna's Faust is a 2-mana, 1-1 one, one blue fish. Tap! Target opponent loses 2 life. Pretty good. The great god Tiamat sleeps, her body betrayed by an unfaithful Faust. Hmm. Trample is a two-mana blue instant. Destroy target creature. That makes sense. The thrum of its massive muscles carried across the desert. The hum of its behemoth hooves reverberated through the night air. Persistent scream! Ah! This is another one of those cards that's just, like, funny. It's just funny. Uh, Persistent Scream is a two-mana blue instant. Target player reveals their hand. If it, their hand, has four or more cards, that player discards all the cards! Which I just think is funny as a wording. Um, the wording is very silly. It would be like all the cards in their hand or whatever. Um, each of the, those cards or something. Uh, it's such an interesting spell because if your opponent does not have four or more cards in hand... It just looks at the cards in their hand and does nothing else. But if it does, it discards four or more cards. Like, that is a lot of discard for one spell. Holy crap. It's so good. Um, check out the, the Magic AI Showdown video to see how this backfired for me. Haha. <laughs> Hint. It was a goblin famine. How old the gods tell the moon, Fool! Colonia of the Unseen. Ormondal's Whale. I don't know who Ormondal is. Ormondal's Whale is a 2-mana 1-3 blue whale. When Ormondal's Whale dies, draw a card. Whatever, it's fine. Be not so concerned with winning that you miss your last meal. For that is not the important thing in life. Bramble by a common saying. Huh. Rakshasa Guide is a 4-mana 3-4 blue whale. It has flashes of flying, and whenever Rakshasa Guide or another creature you control dies, you may draw a card. Classy. There is no salvation for the wicked. Only more Rakshasa to torment them. Very good. Strong Whale! And that brings us back to the beginning. What a nice, solid, 2-mana, two 2-2 two, two Flash Flyer. Nothing fancy. No shenanigans. Just a nice, simple card. And I believe we forgot to read the flavor text. So let's read it right now and end the video with that. When Jacquelhop claims the Krakeners to the south, of his kingdom. He sends the biggest and best ones for bait. I don't know what any of that meant. Thank you for joining me on the shortlist. This is the end of the shortlist. That's all of the cards. I hope you enjoyed. I don't know what I'm doing next, honestly. I'm probably going to take a little bit of a hiatus. Things have been a little bit stressful in my real life lately. Um, we do have plans to do the unplayably overpowered tier list as a live stream sometime nebulously probably probably this weekend coming up when you're seeing this but no promises there watch twitter that's probably the best spot for seeing when i'm going live i don't normally tweet when i'm going live because i don't have a huge twitch following but i want this to be a special event so please check that out Otherwise, I have been Darcy Bits. This has been the shortlist. Our Magic AI Showdown, Urza's AI, Whales vs. Goblins, Roundup Thing. Great. What a beautiful outro. <laughs> have a good night, everyone. I will catch you next time.